How's everybody doing? Dr. Gillard here once again. It is our last dermatology lecture, and we have made it through this dreaded spring of 2020. And yeah, here we go. Let's get done with this. I guess you still have to take your test though, don't you? All right, let's get going here. Talking about moles. What the heck is a mole? What is a mole? Oh, that's a mole. Now, why in the world would we talk about this little mammal that lives under the ground? That's not what we're talking about. How about this mole? No, that's a spy. We're not going to talk about him. We're definitely not going to talk about Avogadro's number. Remember back in, what was that, organic or inorganic chemistry? No, this is what we're going to talk about now. This is a mole. Better call it a melanocytic nevus. Nevi is for plural, nevus is for singular. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, AKAs are nevi, moles, nevus cell. All right, one of the most common dermatological conditions out there. Almost every human has at least one of these things. They are considered a benign tumor of the skin. We do have to differentiate them, and even though this is going to be a fairly long lecture today, I'm just scratching the surface. There are all sorts of moles, atypical, blue moles. There's many more. I'm just kind of scratching the most common three types here. Where do they come from? One theory believes that they arise from the precursors to uh, melanocytes, which are called melanoblasts. So some believe they're mutated melanoblasts, which conjugate together in these nevus cells called nests, nests of nevus cells. And there's several different theories on this, so I won't get into all of them, but um, melanoblasts are thought to normally are the precursors of melanocytes, so if they become mutated, they don't go on to form melanocytes. And they will, these mutated, these nests of Neva cells, which are mutated melanoblasts, we believe, at least some scientists believe, they do grow all the way to the surface of the skin, and that's what that dark spot is. That dark spot is not overpigmented carotinocytes like it can be with other types of lesions. It is the melanoblasts that are up there. Melanoblasts also don't have any tentacles, so they can't inject the carotinocytes around them. They differ from, so these melanoblasts differ from melanocytes in four ways. Uh, the melanoblasts are bigger, they don't have arms, so they don't have their dendrites. They are more abundant, or their cytoplasm is more abundant. They contain coarse granules. And yeah, embryologically speaking, they're both derived from the great wanderers. Some people call this the fourth germ layer, the neurocrest cells. It's a very important group of cells. Okay. So moles are not mutated melanocytes. Mutated melanocytes, then we get into melanoma, right? So they're the precursors, they're the melanoblasts that give rise to these guys. All right, so these neva cells tend to cluster in groups called nests. And the typical evolution of these goes like this. These nests typically grow right down in the stratum basale, maybe the superficial part of the dermis, so right down in that dermal, epidermal junction. And they, have, of course, grow all the way up to the top of the skin, right up through the epidermis, and show up as that, as that macule, that brown macule that you know as a mole. These early, these early nevus, or nevi, tend to be flat, and maybe if they don't have hair growing out of them, they tend to be less than six millimeters. And uh, But then they go through, as you get older, they go through a different look. And then even older, they go through a different look. 
Uh, so they tend to migrate. As they get older, they tend to burrow themselves down further into the dermis. And, it, and their final end phase... They can be all the way down even in the subcutaneous tissue, although most of the time they just hang out in the deep part of the dermis. So the three different cycles or, or phases uh, are this. So we have, there's three, so, so based, in other words, there are three types of mole, moles that you can have uh, based on, usually based on how long they're there. You first start out with a junctional, and that morphs into a compound, and that morphs into a dermal. You don't just sprout a dermal mole, a dermal nevus. Right? So junctionals are made from uh, the cell, and we don't need to worry about this, but histologists can tell because they're made of type A nevus cells, uh, superficial at the dermis uh, stratum basale border. Uh, then they burrow deeper into the dermis. They're called type B nevus cells at that point. They're compound. And these have a different look to them. They're more, uh, they have, they're elevated at this point. And then finally, toward the end of their development, they're dermal nevi. And these are made of type C cells. And these are found deep in the dermis. And they can even go down in the subcutaneous tissue sometimes. So here's a nice strain modified a little bit. And here's your, your first, like you're a kid, you get this brown, dark mole on your skin. It's flat. And that's a junctional nevus. And as time goes by, maybe in your 20s now or 30s, uh, it goes a little bit deeper. And it starts to get a little lumpy, bumpy here. Not warty looking, but it does start to rise. This is flat macule here. right? And then histologically, they do burl down into the dermis further. And then when you hit your 50s or so, uh, they can actually fade a little bit. Some of them become skin color but they get really lumpy, bumpy, and warty looking. Uh, and so that's called a dermal nevus. All right, so that's the progression. That's really all we're going to talk about today. Histologically, here's a, an example of a mole, cross-section through a mole, and you can see these are, ne uh, these are nests of nevi cells. And you can see and this is dermis down here, and this is epidermis. And you can see it's taken over, and it goes all the way to the top. So this is all what a, a mole would look like. All right? They produce different amounts of melanin. Um, some have tentacle, or, or they, as I said, they don't have dendrites or tentacles, if you will. We always use the little octopus as the analogy. Um, but they don't have tentacles, so they can't get rid of it but they do produce varying amounts of it. So some tend to be brown, sometimes to be, some, tend, some of them tend to be black. You can get a combination of black and brown and nevi, so they can be variegated. And yeah, as you get older, as these nevi get older, they can slow down the melanin production and become almost skin colored like. So Acquired, we're talking about acquired, that you're born, you're after birth, but you can be born with some of these things. About 1 to 2% of nevi are actually present at birth, uh, and these are called congenital melanocytic nevi, uh, or CMN, congenital melanocytic nevi, or sometimes they're just called birthmarks. But the lion's share of moles develop after birth, a couple years after you're born, uh, and most moles are there by the time you reach 18 years of age. Okay, if, the, if they pop up after you're born, they're called acquired melanocytic nevi. Congenital can be very, very large, as we'll see here in a minute. The acquired ones typically are under 15 millimeters in size or 1.5 centimeters in size. Congenitals can be, they're not dangerous, they're not symptomatic, but they can keep create huge psychosocial issues. You know, people tease, uh, kids get teased because of these things, and at least hers isn't hairy looking. Some of them can be just filled with uh, just coarse, coarse gorilla hair almost, as we'll see. So let's fall down a little rabbit hole and talk about these congenital melanocytic nevi, or CMN. They vary in degrees from tiny to huge. They can be on the trunk extremities and face. 
they can be confused with people who have for, are with nerf, uh, neurofibromatosis. One are born with moles, but they're more off color. They're more coffee color. So they're often confused with uh, with these cafe au lait spots, but they're not. Cafe au lait spots are much lighter. These are definitely not uh, nevi. Uh, nevi would be much darker brown than this uh, or even black. And moles usually aren't. Well, you can be born with ones this, but they would be much darker, maybe hairy and things like that. All right. Really big ones have a name They're called giant hairy nevi. And there's some subcategories of giant hairy nevi. We're just going to look at the bathing trunk variety of them. Uh, which happen, which are isolated to the trunk, usually down where the bathing suit uh, would be, right at the waistline there. These uh, may contain hair, which is usually really coarse, like horse hair would be a better analogy, really thick like the mane of a horse. They're usually brown and black. On occasion, they can be other colors, red and pink. And here's a guy who struggles with giant hairy nevi, and it's giant, right? But look at, if you pretend this isn't there, see the difference between these and cafe au lait spots. They're much darker, these congenital nevi. Uh, but this is, you have to really watch these because these can turn into malignant melanoma uh, really easily. Melanocytes in the region bec can become mutated. He's already had one big surgery right down here to remove uh, a, a group of melanomas that popped up. So. It's a pretty, pretty tough diagnosis for a young uh, kid. Uh, they're usually, the congenital melanocytic nevi are usually flat during childhood, and they become thicker as the child age. They also tend to be, become more verrucous. I like that word, verrucous. That's like, a, you could name a dog that, verrucous. Uh, that means warty like verrucous. Uh, and yeah, as they get older, they tend to be more warty and a differential diagnosis is the great imitator, seborrheic keratosis, which we've always talked about. Sometimes you can't tell them apart. What about the risk for cancer on these congenital melanocytic nevi? The large ones have a huge risk. The bigger they are for cancer, they can turn into melanoma. The smaller ones, and the risk is proportional to the size, the bigger it is, the greater the chance it, it has at becoming malignant. The smaller ones can vary uh, and uh, they can be cancerous, but it's pretty rare. Ones under 15 millimeters in size very rarely become cancerous. You still have to keep an eye on them for growth though. What do you think of that? Some of you would say, oh, that's seborrheic keratosis, but no, it's warty looking and it's got hair growing out of it. When you see hair growing out of one of these lesions, that's a dead giveaway uh, for a mole of some type. Okay, it's warty looking, so it's not the first type. And we'll go through these types more in a minute. Um, but the junctional nevi are flat. Those are usually more in kids. When they get warty like this, it's either a compound nevi or a dermal nevi. This one was 12. It had hair out of it. Uh, and so, yeah, this was a small congenital melanocytic nevus. Uh, it was uh, ended up being a compound nevus. We, we'll get into that in a minute. It has a cobblestone or warty appearance. The differential, though, if you see this, has to be seborrheic keratosis. Even malignant melanoma could occasionally look like this, but probably not with the hair. But as a primary health care provider, if it breaks the ABCs, send it to the dermatologist. Let them worry about that, and you don't worry about that. Uh, as we said, medium size have a medium chance for melanoma, uh, but medium, I'm talking you know, three, four centimeters, big, much bigger ones. Uh, the, the authors agree that all of these, these medium ones have to be monitored very closely, meaning small biopsies, you know, every so often just to make sure the cells, uh, these nests aren't getting way down in the deep dermis or even to the subcutaneous tissue. If they are, it has to come out because that's on the way to becoming cancerous. Here's a 20 millimeter lesion. 
And it's, now this one almost looks coffee color, doesn't it? Except it's got, the, it's bumpy and and the cafe au lait spots are always macules or uh, or um, patches. They're not, they're not bumpy uh, or rough like this. Uh, so this is just a congenital melanocytic nevi. Uh, it's big. It's been there since birth. It's probably not that uh, big of a deal, but you do need to keep an eye on that thing. Here's another medium-sized one, 18 centimeters. It's getting kind of big. Uh, it's been there since birth. Yeah, it's, that's why they're called birthmarks. And, uh, yeah, it's a congenital melanocytic nevi. Got to monitor it. Got to keep an eye on it because it's medium size. Maybe every year, every other year, take a biopsy of that thing. Once they get large, and large is more than 5% of the body's surface, they can become melan uh, melanoma quickly. In fact, 50% of the melanoma occurs by the age of 5 if a kid is born with them this big. So they should be removed as soon as possible. Now, they can still lighten. Uh, with the passage of time, but uh, and here's a uh, hairy one there, and yep, you got to keep an eye on it. All right, back to our focus is on the acquired melanocytic nevi. They typically appear in, in childhood. They reach a peak by about the third decade of life. Um, puberty, there's another kind of growth spurt. They can pop up a lot at that time as well. After the third decade, they tend to disappear, and they can completely disappear. By the time you get in your 70s and 80s, a lot of them that have been with you your whole life, their whole life, uh, they just kind of uh, fade away, and that's certainly possible. Any moles that pop up after the age of 50 are always suspicious for cancer. It's very unusual to get a mole. It's not unusual to get seborrheic keratosis, though or lentigo, but a flat-out mole would be unusual. Some wives' tales about moles, which are not true. You should never pluck a hair from a mole because it'll make the mole become cancerous is ridiculous. I remember my mom back in the way back in the day saying, don't touch that mole, don't pull any hair out of that. Uh, you know, I had one on my arm. Don't touch it. It got playing football practice. It got ripped off, so I never had it again. She's like, oh, my God, he's going to get cancer of his arm. Uh, had me scared to death. That's completely not true. It, if it gets ripped off, uh, if you pluck hair from it, it's not going to turn it into cancer. Uh, the What about these acquired melanocytic nevi? The risk of them becoming cancerous is quite low, but there is a rule so the more moles you have through your, out your body, the greater the chances are that one of them could become cancerous. Uh, so that is uh, pretty well documented. So if you're the type who has tons of moles all over you, you have to be careful. You should acquaint yourself with a dermatologist once you get you know, 30s and 40s or so. And he should maybe every year have a skin analysis, especially if you've been sunburned. Uh, so they can keep an eye on those things. All right, they typically remain uniform in shape after their development. They can become bigger, though, um, and even though they stay the same in shape, they can become lumpy and bumpy. Uh, if they do change shape rapidly, that's a bad sign for cancer, right? Here is, well, what do you think? Well, it's variegated. It's faintly variegated, but it's really patchy. That's just an acquired melanocytic nevi. Uh, that's probably a junctional. It looks pretty flat to me here. Eight millimeters in size. So is this one. It is variegated, but when they're variegated, it's typically a very faint variegation. See, this is lightly variegated. It's not super black here and then super light here. And we've talked about that before. So it could be lightly variegated. Uh, but again, for you primary health care providers, if you see one of these things, better to refer them to a dermatologist and don't mess with them. Uh, the adolescent growth spurt, as I said, is a high time for these things to develop. Um, scares patients, uh, pop up 13, 14, one of these pops up. It's probably no big deal, but send them to the dermatologist can be scary, but they're usually just moles. 
All right, again, the, we're divided into those uh, JCDs, junctional, compound, and dermal. So let's kind of whip through these here. Lots of pictures today, so don't be scared by, I think there's like 80 slides, but it's because of all the pictures. Uh, they do, so the junctional is usually the first one. They usually develop during childhood, especially uh, usually after the age of two, three, or four. So they pop up. These are the ones again that live in the dermal epidermal junction. They're usually medium to dark brown in color. They are flat, so they're macules. They're usually less than a pencil eraser, less than six millimeters. If it's variegated at this stage, which it's usually not. It'll be very lightly variegated, like that one we just saw. They're not verrucous. That's another word for warty, verrucous. Papillomatous is another word for warty. Uh, a junctional neva, I had trouble finding these things. Here's a little one that's raised. Um, oh, no, this is still flat, sorry. This is junctional levi. This is a small three millimeter. It is variegated very faintly. You can see it's darker here. A little browner around the edges. Uh, they're typically hairless. They don't have hair sticking out of them um, like the dermal nevi do. Uh, their uh, chances of progressing into melanoma is really rare. Just keep an eye on them. If they grow, start growing suddenly. If they grow up, you should get it checked by a dermatologist. Um, but they can definitely go to the next step and start elevating slowly, not quickly. But they can start to elevate and get a little bit bigger. And at that point, you call them a compound nevi, or compound neva, singular. And that means, as we talked about, the nest cells have made it down into the mid area of the dermis. How about this one? It's four centimeters. It's symmetrical. Uh, it is lightly, it's variegated. It's dark in the middle and around here. So that's just a um, junctional, came, turned out histologically to be a junctional nevus. But because it's raised, uh, you could think it's a compound nevus as well. It's really hard to, there's no hair coming out of it there, so it kind of makes the argument it's probably the first junctional nevus. How about this one? This one looks scary, doesn't it? I mean, um, it's nine millimeters, so it breaks the ABCs. It's variegated. It's, it'd be hard to fold it in half, but I mean, you could kind of fold it in half. Uh, but you would have to send this out. I mean, this could be early melanoma. You'd have to send that out. Uh, but it's pretty flat looking. Um, and it did. This one turned out to be not a mole, uh, not cancer. But it did turn out to be the great imitator seborrheic keratosis. Okay, but you couldn't, wouldn't be expected. They'd have to look at this with uh, these this giant microscope glasses and take a biopsy of it if they were worried. I don't think the dermatologist would even need to biopsy that thing, but they have a way to, uh, to blow this way up and look at it really closely. All right, but remember the ABCs. I mean, if it breaks these ABCs, I'm not going to go over these. We've went over these before. Uh, you got to refer out. So with the passage of time, some of them do go to the next phase. The nest cells kind of burrow deeper into the dermis, and now we have ourselves a compound nevus, right? These are more elevated. They are typically brown again. Uh, they're papules because they're raised, or they're a plaque if they're bigger than, uh, bigger than 10 centimeters. They could be either. But these guys tend to have hair starting to grow out of them. So that's one, and it, it doesn't always apply, but that's one kind of way you can tell. This is not a great picture, but I have trouble finding these. Uh, but you can see it is a raised lesion. It's four millimeters. Uh, and so because it's raised, I don't see any hair in it, but because it's rare, I mean it's raised, I would say it probably wouldn't be a junctional. It would be a compound. It's not warty looking, so I wouldn't say that it's a uh, dermal nevus either. All right, so yeah, so that did turn out to be a common, uh, a compound nevus. Everything I just said. No hair coming out of that one, though. How about this one? Another one that's raised. It's five millimeters. You can fold this in half. Um, this is just a run-of-the-mill mole, and it's specifically, because it's raised, doesn't have hair again, but because it's raised, you have to go with compound nevus. How about this one? 
Another one that's raised, it is a little bit variegated, but again, because it's raised, you have to go with a compound nevus rather than a junctional nevus. Junctional nevi are usually flat. Again, no hair coming out of that one. How about this one? Does that one look good? Nine at nine millimeters, slightly raised. That is evil looking, right? I hope you recognize that. There's many colors in here. It's dark brown, light brown here. Um, different shades of brown, really irregular borders, bigger than a pencil eraser, right? Pencil erasers, you know, probably about that big. That's six millimeters as a pencil, number two pencil eraser. Uh, this is no good. That's malignant melanoma, right? So hopefully you caught that. Seborrheic keratosis can kind of look like that sometimes. Uh, so you would have to refer that out. But that one should jump right at you. That, that, that will kill somebody. So don't miss that. And then dermal nevi is the last one. Uh, so these cells have made it deep into the dermis and maybe even into the subcutaneous tissue. These are probably older lesions that have been ar around for a while. So the, the tops, the domes of them have got quite papillomatous or verrucous or warty looking. And they may or may not have hairs coming out. Um, these tend to show up in the face too. Or they get, I mean, they don't have to go through these stages too, right? You can have a flat mole. It can be with you. I have plenty of flat moles. They've been with me my whole life. And they're still hanging out. They have gotten, they've, as I hit 60, they're, they, I have faded. Uh, some of these have faded out uh, quite a bit. In fact, some of them, now that I'm looking, I haven't looked for a long time. It's like one in my left hand always, when I was little, helped me tell my left hand from my right hand. That thing is completely gone. Uh, so they do disappear. They don't have to go through these stages, but they can go through these stages. So you can't miss these, right? If I put these on the test, you better not miss these. That's a dermal nevus, warty, it's verrucous, papillomatous, right? They can still be variegated. They may or may not have hair coming out. They can get pretty big. They can definitely be skin color. The other ones typically aren't. Rarely they could be, but the other ones are typically brown. These older ones that have went through this stage can be skin color. It's another dermal nevus. Now this one, what do you think of this? This is no good, right? It's, it's you can't tell, but it is raised quite a bit. Uh, but it has telangiectasia in here. This looks just like basal cell carcinoma. Uh, so if they have telangiectasia, blood vessel growth within them, that's a bad sign. That can be a basal, basal uh, cell carcinoma, which we didn't have time to talk about. You see why I need more time for this class. Uh, what about that one? That's about maybe 13, 14, 15 millimeters. Good size. Hair coming out of it. Kind of gross looking, right? Warty looking skin color. Uh, that's a dermal nevus. Easy. All right, one run of the mill, everything I said. How about this one? Can't miss that one. Again, it's wordy looking. That's an atypical dermal nevus, though. All right, run of the mill. Well, I don't wouldn't say it's a run of the mill. That's not a run of the mill. I think I maybe make a note even to change that one. 68. That's kind of atypical. There's a there's a run of the mill one, probably about six, seven, eight millimeters. Yeah, some of you are going. Whoa, wait a minute! Look at the blood vessels going through here. Right, these are the ones you see on people's face on the nose where the nose meets the face. These things pop up. Uh, you got to refer it out though. It's got telangiectasia. It could be basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma usually has ulcers in it. And it's oozing and it's nasty. So that car just crashed into the other car, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's dome shaped. Uh, that turned out to be a dermal nevus. But because it had those blood vessels, you did have to send that one out. And it wasn't. It was just a dermal nevus. How about that one? 
That that can look that looks awful lot like basal cell carcinoma. All, although there's no lesion, basal cell carcinoma can be red looking and have like ulcerations in it. But it has some wicked telangiectasia that had to be sent out. Uh, it did turn out to be a dermal nevus though, but that could have just as easily been basal cell carcinoma. Right there's just a little chart. So if they're flat, they're junctional. Once they get elevated, especially they tend to have hair. These can have hair too. Uh, but if they're elevated, they are compound nevi. If they become warty looking, they're dermal nevi. That's kind of the, and there's always exceptions to the rule, but that's kind of the story there. How about this one? Four millimeters, slightly raised. Is it variegated? It is variegated. But it's very symmetrically variegated. Um, you would it breaks the ABCs. It's got the, the regular borders. You could fold it in half. I mean, it doesn't look that scary, but you could send it out uh, just in case. It did turn out to be a compound nevus because it was raised. Didn't have any hair coming out of it. Uh, but it's not verrucous. It's not. It's not a dermal because it's not warty looking. And it's not flat, so it can't be junctional. Got it? How about that one? See it? Hmm, pretty black looking, but uh, it's got hair coming out of it. Well, it can't be a junctional because it's raised. So it's either compound or dermal. So it turned out to be compound because it really is not warty looking, right? It's, I mean, this is close. It's you now it's not really warty, but it's getting a little lumpy, bumpy looking. But turned out the biopsy turned out to be a compound nevus. What do you do with these things? We've been talking about what to do with them. You just send them to a dermatologist and let them worry about it. But they'll take a biopsy of it and check the depth of the nest cells and see what they look like. Make sure they're not mutated, cancerous, dysplastic melanocytes, um, so they can tell. The, uh, yeah, they you should take wide margins when you biopsy these things. Go down to the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, after the biopsy, sometimes you get some pigments that like to grow in the scar tissue. It can look just like melanoma. So if you have had one biopsied, here's someone who had one cut out and biopsied. Uh, and a few years later, started getting this nasty looking stuff, which looks like cancer. Uh, but it's not cancer. It's just... Uh, called a pseudomelanoma, which only occurs in a scar where an old one's been cut out. So it's not to worry, not to worry about that. All right. Well, thank you. Again, I apologize that I couldn't be there in person, uh, but we're all doing the best we can, right? Now, sure, I'll see you next quarter uh, or maybe the quarter after that, but I'm sure I will see you soon right in around the hall. So uh, good luck on that final. I think you guys, most of you did really, really good on the midterm so I don't think you'll have final just do what you did and uh, yep yeah, we'll see you around